Hi everybody, welcome back to a Dread FX Tips and Tricks. In today's video we are going to be doing some airbrush cleaning. I'm going to take you through some cleaning stages on a brush. Now the brush that we're doing today is the Iwata Takumi Eclipse. Now the reason why I've picked and chose this brush to clean is I've been using this brush on the last couple of videos on the channel and I've deliberately left painting it so it's dirty so I can take you through a maintenance check on cleaning a brush on what I do behind the scenes after I've done a video this is usually what I'll do with a brush just to keep it in tip-top condition so I'm going to run through these little stages with you on some bits that you can use nice and cheap nothing expensive so I'll run through these bits on cleaning products so we've got these which are dental cleaning little brushes you can see in the picture there they have got like a little like piece of wire they look like a pipe cleaner very small you can get the actual airbrush ones of these but they're cheap enough to buy a pack of eight for a pound so these can be really handy cotton buds are always handy cotton wool pads we'll be using those water to flush through i've got two airbrush cleaners i've got some thinners and we've got some cutting compound now you can use any sort of cutting compound i've got the 3m fast cut fast cut plus you can use brasso a metal cleaner i'll take you through them stages in a minute so the actual brush that we're looking at is the iwata takumi eclipse and this is a side feed airbrush got the cup to the side so the first thing I usually do is I've got the regulator the air filter on the bottom so we'll unscrew that that just comes off this one's off the custom micron that I got with the micron and I just find them really handy at the bottom nice and comfortable so you've got the brush like that and now we'll take the cup off the side put that to one side we'll take the back off so you wouldn't screw the back which exposes the chuck and the back part of the needle take the crown cap off at the front like that and then undo the chuck at the back and slide your needle out now as you can see if that's picking that up in the camera that is that's filthy guys so the first thing I would do on cleaning is attack the needle and usually I would get a glass with thinners in which is quite coarse thin as it just gets rid of the paint quicker than the airbrush cleaners so a little dab with the cotton wool pad pinch your needle from the middle or the back and then slide forward and twist as you do it a few passes with some thinners and that will clean your paint off your needle nice and easy so there you go that's how dirty that was it was quite dirty so that's your needle <coughs> clean now what I'd recommend you do is once you've cleaned your needle like that get yourself another cotton wool pad and this is where you get the I've got the fast cut plus drop a little bit of the fast cut plus or whatever cutting compound you've got brasso will work uh, metal cleaners will work as you can see on that picture there you just put your needle in and pinch and spin your needle I've done a video on the channel where I put the needle in a Dremel and you can do that it works even better but just pinch your needle and pull it through and what this is doing is this will be polishing the actual stainless steel needle and you will be surprised on how much dirt comes off this so a few passes and that's the sort of dirt guys that you're getting off a needle and this is a brand new brush so polishing your new needle is well advised guys because it it will make the surface a lot smoother and I would say the paint would pass along that needle a lot better if it's a smoother surface as you know when you polish your car and rain lands on it and it beads off after you've polished it than when you've got paintwork that's been sitting there for ages and water will just bead up on it. So a good polished needle helps. So that's really shiny and you can feel the difference. There's no drag 
on that needle that's lovely and smooth so that's your needle nice and clean your glass of cleaner i'm using thinners but if you're using an airbrush cleaner you can do on the takuma you can take the lid off the top that can be soaked the bottom part of this cup unscrews like that and you get that bottom piece on these you can drop that in thinners this one's got like a little washer around there so i wouldn't really drop this into thinners i would get your cotton wool pad wipe your cup out and that as you can see that's filthy and just pinch around the end like that and that gets all the dirt off the thread so that's nice and clean get yourself some kitchen towel give that a wipe off like so and that's your cup all clean guys so that's the next stage completed leave them ones in soak you've got your crown cap to the front and a lot of the time if you're airbrushing with the crown cap on which is this little piece here you can get a build up of paint around the tips of the crown cap so you can drop that in thinners leave that to soak not a problem the rear piece of the airbrush you can get paint come across because you've got it on your hands you can get a build up around here so i'd get your cotton wool pad and just give that a little wipe over thinners again if you've got it or airbrush cleaner you can use both just give that a little wipe off nice and simple and then dry that off so that's the rear part of the body done now back to the brush you've got your next piece that you can unscrew on these which is you've got your crown cap that goes to that front piece just here this piece here can unscrew off so take that piece off and then that will expose the nozzle inside and these use a little spanner you get these in the box and you can undo that that unscrews and that is a tiny nozzle guys so just be really careful where you put that down that's really tiny you can see that tiny little nozzle so that'll expose that piece there you can take the side pin out like that give that a wipe and then you can see the hole here you can look straight through so you've got access through there all the way through to that side and then you can get into the front this side as well so that's when i use one of the little dental brushes bring your jar of cleaning fluid back over and just put the brush through like that and you can clean all the way through the actual body of the brush if you're using thinners try and keep your airbrushes you're cleaning it facing down you don't want to be lifting it back so thinners runs back up into that chamber where your air valve is keep any like solvents away from that side and it's always a good idea when you're airbrushing and you've got paint in your cup in your actual airbrush always make sure your airbrush stand that you hold your airbrush in is angled downwards so your brush is always in its holder going down never have your brush flat or tilted back because paint can run back up where the needle is and then it goes into where the trigger is and then you start getting a sticky trigger so always keep your airbrush holder angled forward so your paints always nose down to the front that does help and then I just put the cleaner the little brush into the front like that and you can see the dirt that's coming out of that give that a clean so a good soak with cleaner through both of the sides of that nice and easy if you're using cleaning a top cup airbrush say a the Creos PS270 or 771 take the front assembly out like we've just done on this one and then you can put your brush 
through the front and going through the top as well and clean it that way. So that is the front end of the brush. Clean, nice and clean. Now you can get the actual nozzle and these are absolutely tiny. Get the pipe cleaner and just push it and twist it into that. And just give that a little spin round in there. That is really tiny guys, as you can see there. Little clean through. Attach that back to the brush. I've not got my glasses on, so this is gonna be a nightmare. These are really, really fiddly. I think that's on. And just knit that up. Don't knit that up too tight, just till you feel it pinch and then that'll do. So that's back on. So that's that part of the brush clean and then you can move on to the stuff that you're soaking in your cleaner. Now, this bottom part of the Takuma, I usually get a cotton bud and just run it round inside there. Get that paint out in that piece. Get your little brush again, drop a little bit of thinners on it and then just give that a clean inside there like that, nice and easy to pull any dried up paint out. Little clean in there. So that's good to go. Little dry off. So that one's nice and clean, all cleaned up. Then get your cap, little wipe over, nice and simple, bit of paper towel. That's that piece. And then your crown cap, you can get your brush again and just go around the crown cap and just clean off any paint that's on that crown cap. So that one's nice and clean, dry that. So that's all the brush stripped down as far as I would strip it down and cleaned guys, nice and simple. So cotton buds, are really, really handy, nice and cheap for cleaning. These little dental brushes are brilliant because you can get in the intricate pieces of the nozzle and in the actual brush itself. So they're really handy, nice and cheap as well. Your airbrush cleaners, you're not using a lot. That thinners in there can be strained and used again. Um, your airbrush cleaners, I'll leave you some links in the description on where you can get some decent airbrush cleaners from. So now putting it back together, when you get the eye watches, you get the super lube that comes with it. Now I'd recommend using a drop of this. Usually drop a little bit around the back of that trigger. So just inside here. And that is an actual new one. So a little bit to the super lube. On the back of that trigger because that piece in there, that slides against that trigger. So if you put a little bit behind that trigger at the back, that makes that a little bit smoother. Then I always tend to get a little bit on the needle to the, about there on the needle, so you're sort of going halfway on the needle, pinch it and just rub that on the needle like that and then guide your needle in. Now, when you guide your needles in, place it into the back of the chuck, slide it nice and slow forward, and then when you feel it come to the front, don't force the needle too hard to the front. All you're doing is you're pushing it until you feel it stop. Put your finger on the back, little bit of tension, and then with your other two, with your other finger and your thumb, just tighten that chuck up 
like that. So that's your needle in place. Then you can put your cap, your front piece back on like that. Drop your crown cap on just in case you're gonna jab your needle. So you've got your crown cap on, that's on. Then get the back part of the body. Bit of super lube again and just drop a little bit of super lube on that thread at the back screw that in and that's nice and smooth now because sometimes if you're not cleaning your brush often that thread there can get tightened up and get really tight so drop a little bit of super lube on that nip that up that's done if you've got a bit i've got a little bit of paint on this body here so i'll just drop a little bit thinner in give that body there a wipe Around there that's done get your cup to the side that you have it on put that piece in then screw your cup back on I don't like these cups they're too big <laughs> that's why I always use the micron cup you've seen that in the videos I've dropped the micron cup on drop your cap back on get your blanking off pin and drop that in the side I'll drop that back on. These are really good guys. If you um, pick one of these up for your airbrush, they're really, really good. These are uh, filters and it gives you something to hold on to as well when you're working. Feels really nice. So we'll drop the airline in. And you can just tell by the sound, that's nice and clean. Drop some water in there. And there you go. And you will always tell a real nice clean airbrush when you drop your air on and then pull really slowly back on the trigger and you get that lovely soft mist coming out. And you get that nice sound. Sometimes you'll hear that choked up type sound and you know it's you've got a dirty brush, but that's really lovely and smooth. The trigger feels really nice because I've dropped the super loop to the back, so you've got a nice smooth trigger. And if you need to take your needle out again, that just feels really smooth now to the back. So everything's working absolutely spot on. So that's just a quick maintenance, guys, on stripping and cleaning. That's as far as I would clean it. If you do need to break down these down further, if you've been having your brush sitting back and paint's gone here and your trigger, when you sometimes when you press the trigger down, they push down, they stay down, and they take a while to come back up. That means you've got a bit of paint round here. So you would basically undo the chuck, undo the inside, pull that out, lift the trigger out, and then get airbrush cleaner, not a solvent one, get an airbrush cleaner, a cotton bud, and then just clean down inside the chamber here. You can't go right down inside the body here. You'll, you'll go as far as sort of there. Give that a clean, drop your trigger back in and then that will stop that sticky trigger. So always keep your airbrush like that, pointing down when you've got paint in. If you've got a top cut or a side, keep them fronts of the airbrush, nose down, and it keeps your paint level that way instead of it got creeping back up and it can creep up where the needle is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's only a short one, but a nice, simple maintenance, cleaning tips and tricks, guys, that will keep your airbrush in tip-top order. And that's what it's about. The cleaner the brush, the better results your work are gonna be. There's nothing worse than doing a piece of artwork. You go to start or you've been airbrushing for quite a while and a big chunk of paint splatters because there's a build up of paint in your brush but if you can keep your brush clean like that for when you start and then paint for an hour stop give your brush a little maintenance overall like that that took five minutes and your brush is good to go again you're nice and clean start painting again that's the best way and it will keep your work nice and clean so 
thanks for watching don't forget if you're new to the channel click that subscribe press that notification so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos and trying to fix custom paint and i shall see you in tomorrow night's video guys which is the friday night feast we're going to be airbrushing on a aluminium composite panel and it's going to be quite a big panel as well it's about two and a half three foot tall by about a foot and a half wide piece of artwork so i'll run you through the stages of an aluminium composite panel so yeah i'll see you in tomorrow night's video guys thanks for watching